all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show so what we'll do today is a very very important topic there is a very common question that is asked and that is what happens after the covid infection should i take a vaccine or not number 1 number 2 if i have taken a vaccine single shot after being uh, positive with covid do i need to have the second shot to number 3 a very common question and unfortunately there is a doctor who has been talking about this repeatedly and uh, un- i think that there he's not correct but the question that comes uh, to me again and again is that it is said that the durability and the uh, efficacy of the immunity generated by vaccines is better than natural infection these are the three questions and we are going to talk about them and we have a study to discuss that and the courtesy is a cool bean who tweeted that study to me on twitter so thank you very much to that cool bean and we are going to look at that study today very very important uh, set of questions and answers so here uh, we have the um, gifts for humanity continuing let me show you the study and this uh, would make sense so studies as so this is drbean.com this is the study the link is in the description the study is antibody responses in zero positive that means the people who had been infected and have zero positive or have antibodies already persons or have immunity already in zero positive persons after a single dose of sars-cov-2 mrna vaccine so this study covers moderna and pfizer and even when they say single dose they actually do talk about both doses number 1 and number 2 they also talk about vaccination in new people who who never had sars-cov-2 compared to those who had the covid infection and were vaccinated with one dose or two dose so i think it is a beautiful study to look at then here there is a very common question which is a context of the study and that is what antibody levels are valuable or what levels are important for us to say that we are protected or not i'll give you the short answer right now and that is that everyone will deal with the virus with differing levels so it is not necessary that if i get the infection and the levels that i mount are going to be the same that you will mount to defeat the virus our levels may be different but what is important is that all of us would mount a response and that response would go up quickly and take care of the virus and when it has taken care of the virus then the response would start going back down then there is another uh, um, link over here which is about the once again the antibody titers and their comparison that means antibody levels ratio of the levels and their comparison in outpatient patients asymptomatic patient, persons and then hospitalized and critical patients then here is another diagram that i took from this one and that actually has a beautiful and a very important piece of information in here as well which is here in this diagram and we'll discuss that too and finally one more link which is effective virus neutralizing activities in antisera from the first wave of survivors of server covid severe covid so with these uh, links let's start our discussion so here is what's happening let's say we have a person who became covid positive became ill with it then they recovered and when they recovered they have the memory b cells they have memory t cells they may actually have the antibodies being produced as well it depends how far back they had the infection normally for 2 3 4 months antibodies continue to be produced and they start declining and then they stay at a very basal level and then this person then goes out and gets the vaccine and gets one shot of the vaccine then gets another shot of the vaccine and the question is what happens in them compared to somebody who did not have covid and was vaccinated so that is the that is the question and here is the study interestingly the authors mention 
that they did not actually do this as a primary study. In their organization, there was another study going on in which they were working with the COVID positive patients and the authors got a chance to work with that study and the folks that were participating in it and they were able to do a sub study in there as well, which I think is a very smart thing. So what did they do? What they did was they took 110 people who were some of them were COVID positive and some of them were COVID negative. So 43 of them were COVID positive. 67 were COVID negative. The, and then they vaccinated them. So all of these folks who were chosen here, COVID positive or negative, were given vaccines. Now, the question was that somebody who was COVID positive and is now receiving a vaccine, what is going to happen to them? What would happen to their antibodies? What would happen to the cells? And that is a question. And the vaccines that were given were Pfizer to 88 people and Moderna to 22. And here, if you see at the top side, the vaccine that was given, so these were 43 COVID positive people, 59% were females. The average or the mean age was 41.4 years, and they were given two doses of vaccine. The first dose was in 2020. So that is one group. Second group who were COVID negative, they were also given the same uh, doses and 64% were females in this group. 41.3% was their average or mean age. First and second dose of the vaccines were given. Now let's look at the results. It looks deceptively simple, but this, this one table has answers for all of those questions. And I want to show you in the link here as well, so that when you can when you are reviewing it, this is the diagram that I have depicted there. That is one. And secondly, this is the data that they have laid out here, which I have tabulated. So what is the data? Let's look at it. So I need your attention for a second. There are two groups of people. One group is those who were COVID negative and were going to be given first dose and second dose. So that group is here in blue. So this blue group is the group that was originally COVID negative and is given a vaccine. So let's see what happens. This is the number of days after the first dose. This is the second dose. Here is the antibody levels as they develop in the person. So take me as an example. Let's assume I did not ever have COVID before. And now I'm given the, so they test my antibody levels before giving me the vaccine. Then they give me the first dose. For example, I got it two or three days ago. And then every four days, they continue to take my blood sample and measure the antibodies in it. So there's zero to four days, they measure the blood sample in there and antibodies and five to eight, nine to 12 and so on. So they keep measuring it till I get the second dose and then they measure the antibody levels after the second dose. So this is in someone who did not have COVID. Then they did the same thing to the people who were COVID positive and now were getting a vaccine. And then they wanted to see what happens to them, how much antibodies are they producing. So before the vaccine started, they were infected and recovered. So they measured the vaccine levels in them. Sorry, not vaccine, antibody levels in them. Then they gave them the vaccine shot. And then they measured them within the first four days and then the eight days and 12 days and 16 days and 21 days and 27. Then they gave them the second dose and then they measured that as well. This one table gives us all the answers. So let's look at the answers. First, those people who were COVID negative and got the vaccine. They tested them for the antibodies before and the antibodies were at negligible level. So that means there may be some people whose antibodies were cross-reacting or they may have actually had the COVID but never had known that. So regardless of that, there were some people who had some baseline antibodies, negligible antibodies. Then they gave them the vaccine. Consider me, for this example, me. And then within the four days, 
they looked at their antibody levels. And here I have put a green line here. This is antibody level of 10 raised to power 4, the area under the curve tighter. So for us, let's just simply say this 10 raised to power 4 seems to be a level which is mostly declared or observed as a protective level, 10 raised to power 4 and above. Again, this is not a hard and fast rule. There are people who could be at a lower level and protect their body. And there are people who are at a higher level and not able to protect. But majority of them are at this level. So now I am given the vaccine. I did not have the antibodies before. And check this out. In first four days, I have started making some antibodies. Then next four days, if you see here, 10 is power 3. So I'm making some more antibodies, still not really a protective state. 12 days, some more antibodies. And why there are multiple dots here? Because the number of people are small, that each dot represents one person. So you can see that the antibodies in people have started moving up towards 10 raised to power 4, and that is within 12 days. The, the uh, protection is developing. 16 days, more protection developing. 20 days, more protection developing. 27 days, more almost touching in some, touching the protection level that may be necessary. Then you give the second dose, and all of a sudden, majority of them are now protected. This is COVID neg negative. We expect it. This is fine. Now let's see COVID positive getting vaccine. Start back from here. They took a number of people who were COVID positive before, and now they are giving them vaccine. So before the vaccine, they measured their antibody levels, and they found some, some people had almost negligible antibody levels. Some had antibodies levels almost approaching already protected state. This is someone who was COVID positive before. Then they give them the first dose. So keep this line in mind. There were already people in this area that is almost touching this line. So they gave them the first dose, and they saw that here is the result. And why is this result different from this? Why are there less people here and more here? This was a data of convenience, study of convenience. That means if somebody could come in and give a sample, they asked them to. If somebody would not come in and give a sample, they would say, fine. So you would see that sometimes samples are less, sometimes samples are more. But look at this. Somebody who was sick got the first vaccine dose after recovering from COVID. On the eighth day, they have already, majority of the people have already crossed the protection um, titers. And again, I'm, I'm using the word protection titer here flexibly. Authors did not call this to be the protection titer. I have put the other links here to kind of compare that and say this is a level where you could say, fine, they were better here. But once again, clarifying, some people would actually be able to protect themselves at the lower levels, and some people will not be able to protect themselves even at the higher levels. And I can show you some diagrams there. So back here, let's just assume for the for our discussion, this is a protection level. You would see that within eight days now, there are protection developed in the COVID positive after the first dose. 12 days, more protection. It has actually gone above 10 raised to power 4. 16 days, even more above 10. 20 days, above. 27 days, above. So they are all kind of the same. Now, here is the important part. Then they gave them the second dose. COVID positive, recovered patient, got first dose, then also got the second dose. Look at the data here. This data is not different from this. So the authors actually concluded that second dose was of no use. Why? Because the first dose created enough levels of antibodies that second dose did not increase it any further. Now, second question has become answered that if you take a dose after you have been uh, had the infection, will your body create more protection? Yes, that is answered. Third question answered. Many people say, hey, after the first dose, should I take the second dose as well? And here is the answer. According to this data, study is small. I understand that. And that is 
there was no difference after the second dose. It is actually understandable. From a mechanism point of view, body is responding. Body has already learned to respond to SARS-CoV-2 when the original infection occurred. Then you challenged it with the infection-like thing that is vaccine, and body started responding. And this response would now continue for two to three months. And then here in 20 days, you give one more dose. Body doesn't care. Body is already responding at the peak levels where it thinks I need to produce enough antibodies to protect for next two, three months. Why does it care for the next one dose? So that is answered as well. So now the question, the final question to answer, which even this morning somebody was sending it to me that, hey, this doctor has said that the vaccine generated antibodies are better than the infection generated antibodies. And it is actually a wrong concept. But I want to show you with data. Look at this data. Here is the second dose. This is the second dose of the vaccine. This is after the infection second dose of the vaccine. And let us go back here. Let us go back here. First dose of the, after the somebody who was COVID and then first dose of the vaccine. Let's come back here. No vaccine, just the infection. And do you see that? Yes, it is not crossing 10 to the power 4, but still very protective. So person who was infected had protection that the second dose of the vaccine actually did not really match it that well with when they had infection and the second dose. And that was almost similar here. This is the data. Yes, this was lower because this is after some time of recovery. And this is after vaccine, it is a little higher, but more higher if it was already an infected person. And can I now say not only more, more higher or higher, more higher and higher, but also better protection because the protection that goes to natural infection is going to produce antibodies against the spike protein and the nuclear capsid protein and the other parts of the virus compared to the spike protein immunity that is against the spike protein only. So uh, why is getting natural infection bad? Because it can kill us. And now some folks would say, well, the vaccines can kill us as well. Correct. But the, the still, when you look at the data, even when you have those vaccines that are under the gun at this time, even then, after 20 million, 60 people, 30 in UK, 30 in other countries. And then about 10 in UK died and eight in another country died, right? That if the same number of people had gotten the infection, then millions would have died, depending upon the age group. If the age group was advanced, then 2.5 million would have died. If the age group was younger, then about 200 to 300,000 would have died. So this is not correct to say that natural infection is better than vaccine, but natural infection does produce better quality of uh, protection compared to the vaccine. It is actually understandable. Vaccine goes after the spike protein only. Natural infection goes after the whole virus. So these three questions are answered. Now let's just look at the data as they presented here as well. So I'm going to open up this diagram once more. It would probably make a little more sense now. So if you see here, this is what I duplicated, not exactly in my diagram. So this is the vex, the antibody titers. The blue ones are COVID negative who are being given vaccine. The orange one are COVID positive who are given vaccine. And if you see here, this is COVID positive, 10 to the power 3 and above. And this is after the second dose of vaccine, still in a similar ballpark. And this is the various side effects as well. So I hope that this answers some of these questions that, number one, do you need a vaccine after the infection? So I would then maintain my answer that I have been giving for almost a whole year now. And that is, if 
somebody had a change in their immune status since they got the infection, then it is necessary to get the vaccine. Or if somebody had the vaccine that is to a different mutant and they are not protected against it, then it is fine to get a vaccine. And finally, it is actually okay to get the vaccine even if you were infected because vaccine, what does the vaccine do? Vaccine is like the reinfection. So it is going to come in and kind of knock at the immune system's door and say, I am here, I'm the virus, although it is a fake virus, I'm the virus, and the immune system would say, well, I'm already ready for you. I have these memory cells sitting here, uh, T helper cells and cytotoxic cells and B cells. They're going to just wake up and make antibodies and make cytotoxic activity and we'll remove you. And that the titers that you saw after the vaccine dose that went up, it's not vaccine creating some new antibodies. It is vaccine just triggering the immune response again. If you had gotten the infection, it would have been the same as well. So that is the first dose. Second dose did not make any difference. And that makes sense as well. 20 days ago, the first dose came in, woke up the immune system. The immune system is not working. It's not going to continue to work for two, three months. So you give another dose. Why does it care? It is already fighting. So that is the discussion. So I hope that uh, this makes sense. Let's do this. Let's do a chit chat and uh, answer any further questions about this. So that would allow this uh, talk to be closed at a reasonable time. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your time. Please like, subscribe, and share. If you would not like to subscribe, if you would not like to share, then please like this. With that, if you would like to support this work, there are three links in the description. One is if you would like to buy me a coffee and help me with my <laughs> coffee addic addiction. The other one is if you would like to become a patron for this work. And third one is if you would just like to support this work. With this, I also want to thank Margaret once again for her very generous donation last night. So thank you very much, Margaret. You have really, really helped throughout this time. And I would see you in a few minutes in chit chat.